Hello everybody, Claudia Boleyn here, and as you might have noticed, I've not made um, any videos for quite a while. The reason being, I've been ill, and it hasn't just been uh, mental health stuff. I've actually had um, some really bad like stomach problems recently. So this video is nothing like my usual videos. It's actually going to be talking about um, an endoscopy procedure, which is something that I did yesterday at the hospital. Um, I thought I would talk you through the procedure for those who might also have to have it because I know I have a lot of viewers who also have like digestive problems and stomach problems which are linked to stress which is like me so I thought some of you guys might find this useful in maybe like setting your minds at rest about what it's like because I have to admit I was pretty scared of having it done so you might be watching this and have no idea what an endoscopy is um what I had was an upper endoscopy and basically that means and I'm not good at science I'm not gonna lie um it means that they put a tube through your mouth um and down into your stomach and into your intestine and they put a little camera down it so that they can see inside your stomach inside your intestine just to make sure everything's working properly and that you haven't got any perforations or any ulcers or internal bleeding or anything like that. It does sound really scary and I was really scared when they told me I had to have it done. Um, because A, I already get really panicky in hospitals. If you watch my channel you probably know that I have um, an anxiety and panic disorder. And so when I'm in public I find it really difficult to be in waiting rooms and in large crowds. So you can imagine that being in a hospital itself is very scary for me. So just that on its own was frightening. But of course the idea of something going through your mouth um, is frightening. To add to the fright, initially, um, was the fact that they don't put you out for this uh, procedure. They actually, you can either have it without sedation and with just a throat number, so you're not feeling anything um, in your throat, or you kind of have a bit of anaesthetic. So um, that's what I had and that's the highest they can give you which is basically, it, it chills you out, so it's like you're going under, you're not really aware of what's going on, you're sort of in and out of sleep, so they can just do it, but you are conscious at the same time, so you can respond to them. Now that sounds scary, I know it sounds really scary, and I was scared of that, because, you know, it sounds awful to be conscious but not able to do anything, but actually, having gone through it, I can tell you, it's fine. It's not nearly as scary as you think it's going to be. Like, you think you're going to be, like, completely with it in the brain and just lying there and not able to do anything. That is not the case. You are so chilled out. Like, it's like, it's a good place. It puts you in a good, chill, happy, relaxed state of mind. In a way, you can kind of enjoy the procedure. You can't enjoy the procedure, but the sensation is you're so chilled, you're so in and out, that afterwards, you barely remember anything has happened. And for me personally, I was in no distress afterwards. I was sort of in and, out of in and out of sleep. I kind of vaguely remember them taking the tube out of my mouth. I don't remember them putting the tube in. And I woke up and I felt fine. I, I didn't feel ill. I didn't feel sore or anything. Um, I was aware that something had gone on in my throat, but it just felt like when you've got a very mild cold and you've got a slight sort of, just a sore throat coming basically, but that goes away really quickly and I don't know how it is for other patients, but the other patients I saw that had had the procedure done before me, both of them were fine as soon as they came out. I saw them wheeled out into the waiting room as soon as they were done and they were smiling and they were chatting, um, they were a bit like chilled out and like high, which was pretty cool. That's a nice thing to know that's going to happen, I think. Um, but they were fine, so you don't have to worry about that. The most unpleasant part of the whole procedure, for me personally, and this is what the anaesthetist uh, told me as well, is when they numb your throat. So you open your mouth wide and they put like a little spray in and they spray the back of your throat. And at first it's fine. And it's just like kind of this, like, for me it was banana tasting. There's like this sort of sharp banana taste in your mouth and you're like, well this is doing nothing, this is this hasn't worked, clearly. And then they say to you, swallow it. So you swallow it and you're like, no, this isn't working. Seconds later, you cannot feel anything. You cannot feel it. It's really weird, but there is no pain. Like, I think when you go into something like this, they say to you in medical terms, there might be some discomfort. And that rings alarm bells in your head because you think, is that just their nice way of saying it's going to be really painful? But I promise you, it's not painful at all. It's a weird sensation, it's kind of completely numb and very cold and it's it's odd to get used to. And at first you feel sort of like you can't breathe because you're not used to it. But you can breathe, you honestly can breathe, it's fine. You just, you can breathe through your mouth and through your nose, it's just a weird sensation. So that, personally, I think was the most scary part and that's what 
the doctor said would be the most scary part. And it's not even scary when you get to it, as long as you know what's going to happen. I imagine it would be scary if you went in and they did this and you couldn't feel your throat and you'd be kind of freaked out by that. But if you know that's going to happen, it's, it's fine. And it doesn't hurt at all. Honestly, it doesn't hurt. The most difficult part of the procedure, um, they told me, I mean, it's weird because I don't remember it happening to me, is when they actually... I, again, I, I am really bad with science, but I know that there's two little pipes in your throat. This is a bad example. This is how they did the example for me, but obviously with more knowledge. And when you breathe, one opens, and when you eat, the other opens, and you can't breathe and swallow at the same time, which is why we gag when we have something stuck in our throat. So when they put the camera down that little um, food pipe, for a moment, it apparently can feel quite uncomfortable because, you know, you're, you're, you think, oh god, I'm choking, I can't breathe. But it's fine, it only lasts for a second, according to the- Again, I don't remember this, and that's a really good thing, because that is how good this chilled out thing is. I mean, even if I was aware at the time, I was clearly so chill that I don't have any recollection at all. So, you know, don't worry about that. Apparently it just feels like if you're swallowing a big chunk of food, like you've had a big bite of steak or something. When I was younger, I almost choked on a Smartie, and I think it's probably something like that. But again, I don't even remember that. So that's how good the anaesthetic was for me. Now I'm not gonna lie to you about the bad parts of the procedure, but I can be completely honest and tell you, for me, I wasn't aware of any of the bad parts at all. My mum was waiting outside the room because I have a panic disorder and they let my mum kind of wait closer outside than other relatives would usually be able to. And apparently she could hear me violently retching throughout the procedure. But, now I'm gonna be honest, that's what she could hear. But I can promise you, I don't remember a single thing about it. So I think that's probably just a natural reaction. Clearly I have a terrible gag reflex, and no jokes there, thank you very much. This is a serious, serious conversation we're having. But I have a terrible gag reflex, and that's probably why. But again, I don't remember any of that at all. Apparently that's quite common. The people, again, the people coming out of the procedure weren't distressed. I certainly wasn't distressed, I don't remember any of it. The only distressed person was my mum, apparently, who had to hear it. So the way they put the anaesthetic into my body was that they put a cannula in the back of my hand. So that's when, um, you know, like when you have a blood test, they put a little, a little tiny needle into one of your veins, and then they put the sort of cannula in, which is how they attach the anaesthetic pipe thing when you're in theatre. They put it in the back of your hand, and it doesn't hurt, it's just like a little scratch. Um, I know some people are really bad with needles, I, to be honest, I'm not actually that bad with needles, so I, I imagine it's probably more scary for other people. But there's no pain, I can assure you, that it's, it's like a scratch, it's not like terribly painful, you're not going to cry or anything, and it la it's really quick. So they put that in the back of your hand, and that's how when you're in theatre they kind of keep you chill and on top of the world. You might think when I'm in theatre, oh no, it's going to be awful because I won't be able to speak, I've got a tube down my throat, how will they know if there's something wrong? Well, they have you um, linked up to the machine, like they, they're testing your blood pressure and your levels and all that stuff. They're testing your heart rate so they can see if you're in any distress. And what they do is they would just up your anaesthetic to keep you more chilled out. So you're totally fine. They can see if there's any problems. Your body's not going to lie. They're going to they can see that and they can fix that. So you don't have to worry about that at all. So actually going in for the procedure and lying down on the bed for me was very scary. But again, like I have uh, an anxiety and a panic disorder. So I feel like it was kind of ramped up to 100 for me, and it's it's really annoying and I was kicking myself because I was chill, you know, I was fine, I was chatting to the doctor and chatting to the nurses, and I was fine, but the moment I got on that table, it's like my brain was ready, and let's go for this, and my body's shaking like this. And at one point I was shaking so much they thought they wouldn't be able to go through with the procedure because I was shaking and crying. And that's like annoying for me, because it's like I was in there thinking, what the hell is this, let's just get on with it. But as someone who has a panic disorder and an anxiety disorder, um, yeah, it kind of... Well, I imagine I wasn't the easiest patient to deal with, let's just put it that way. But I tell you what, the staff I met at the hospital, people really put down NHS staff, but these were the nicest people, and they dealt so well with me. Like, I, I suppose they've dealt with people with panic disorder before. But they were fantastic, and I was, they were clear and concise about what was going to happen, and they were friendly. And when I was a, a little bit, like, shaking in the theatre, like, the nurses were, like, rubbing my back and chatting to me, and one of them was chatting to me about her kid who's my age. And just generally, the people were lovely and reassuring, and when I was wheeled out, they were smiley, and they asked me how I was, and they got me a cup of tea and some custard and creams, and it was just 
I mean, it, it's not a nice procedure to have to go through because no one likes being in hospital. But honestly, they made the experience so, like, stre as stress-free as it's possible for me to get. I'm sure for people who don't have anxiety or panic disorders, it would be absolutely chill and fine. It's just this damn panic disorder, which got me a little bit in the theatre. But honestly, you don't have to worry about this procedure. The results of my endoscopy were great. I don't have like an ulcer or anything like that, which is good. Um, the bad side about that is that obviously my anxiety and my stress is causing physical symptoms. So that's the problem, which is annoying because in some ways it might have been more helpful to be able to say, there's the problem, let's fix it. But oh no, it's, it's the old uh, psychiatry stuff again, unfortunately. But at least, you know, I've had it checked, I don't have to worry anymore. The reason I actually went in is because um, I told you I've been ill recently. Well, I, I was actually vomiting blood one night, and then I've been having like really intense stomach pains, which is quite worrying, and I was really worried about it. But um, when I was younger, I suffered very badly from gastritis, and I used to have that all the way through my school years. And it was a blight on my life. I hated it. It was awful. Um, and so it's probably just... And that was linked to stress, again. Like, when I get stressed and anxious, it seems to come out in physical symptoms for me. So that was kind of it. But I'm fine, and there's nothing to worry about. So after the procedure, or the surgery, I think they call it, like, a minor surgery. I'm not sure. It doesn't feel like a surgery. But um, afterwards, you're a little bit sort of weird afterwards because of the anaesthetic for, like, 24 hours afterwards. Like, you're fine, you're happy, it's like not disturbing or anything, but um, you're a bit like <laughs> chilled out and you know, maybe you say things you wouldn't usually say. Um, you're happy, you know, it's nice for me to be happy because you know, I have mental illness, so it's actually really nice to be chill after that. Um, but yeah, I we had to go to Tesco's, my mum and I, after uh, the procedure, a while after. And apparently I was walking like a zombie, I didn't even realise, like I wasn't lifting my feet off the floor very much. So minor things like that will happen after the anaesthetic, but it doesn't feel bad, you just feel kind of tired and heavy and like, oh I could really do with a nice nap. And it's, it's good, you just sleep it off, and now it's been 24 hours since the procedure, almost exactly 24 hours since the procedure actually, and I feel fine, I've just got a very slight sore throat, but that's it. I really hope that this video has put your minds at rest and it hasn't stressed you out any further. Like, I was really worried going into this. But you don't need to be worried, honestly. It's like, most of the, the horribleness about the procedure is your own fear about it, not the actual procedure itself. I swear to you, like, for me at least, it was a really nice surprise, actually. And no one wants to have it done, but it's important sometimes to see what's up and it's totally worth doing and it, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt. And it seems scary, it's the idea of it which is scary, not the actual procedure. And when you come out of it, you really, I'm not just saying this, you come out of it and you think, was that it? Is that over? Can I go home? What, they're bringing me tea and biscuits? What is this? So it's wonderful. And I had it done on the NHS, of course. The NHS is wonderful and the government needs to give the NHS more money and the people working in the NHS need to have a pay rise because they're wonderful and they work so hard. And the people I met were just lovely people. Okay, so um, good luck if you're having an endoscopy or if you're thinking about having one done and I would 100% recommend it. Like, it's not like a fun day out, but at the same time, it's really not as bad as you think it's going to be. And, um, you know, it's, it's worth getting it done, honestly. Please don't be afraid. I'm a total wimp and I managed to get it done. Yeah, I cried and shook a little bit, but, you know, I still had it done and I'm a wimp. So you can have it done, it's fine. Okay, I love you loads and um, I hope you're feeling okay. I hope you're not having too bad like stomach pain because you're probably if you're getting one done you're probably having stomach pain so take deep breaths and chill and um if it's acid then gaviscon's good i take gaviscon all the time i swig it from the bottle it's great the aniseed one though not the mint one okay i love you loads and i'll see you really soon bye